Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a grungy 3D text effect in Illustrator using nothing but the built-in tools and a single JPEG texture. You can download the project files to see how everything was put together and have images to work from if you don't have any of your own. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a new document. And since this is for the web, I'm going to be working in pixels. So I'm going to make this 1920 by 1080 and I'm going to leave the color mode at RGB, and I'm going to set the raster effects to 300 ppi. And then I'm going to hit OK. The first thing that we want to do is create our background. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool and create a rectangle that's the same size as our canvas. And then I'm going to center it on the canvas by using the alignment tools up here. And I'm going to remove the default stroke. Next I'm going to come over to our gradient panel. And I'm going to give it a gradient that's white to a light gray. So I'm going to leave the white color here. And I'm going to expand my panel here so I can see everything. And for my black, I'm going to change that to about a 15% gray. Then I need to adjust the angle of the gradient. So the white is at the top and the gray is at the bottom. So I'm going to set that to negative 90 degrees. Next, I'm going to come up and click Effect, Stylize, Inner Glow. And I'm going to change the mode to Multiply, the color to black, and the opacity to about 10%. And then I'm going to change the blur to 144 pixels, which is the maximum that Illustrator lets you use. And I'm going to leave it set to Edge. Now when I hit OK, you'll see that it creates a nice inner glow from the edges of my background. Now we can create our text. For the text, you want to use a smooth script font, and we're going to be using one called Cocktail Shaker. So I'm going to just type my text out. And then I'm going to resize it and change the font and just get it into position. And lastly I want to change the font color to white. Next with my text selected I'm going to click Effect 3D Extrude and Bevel and I'm going to set the X rotation to 20 degrees, the Y rotation to 0 and the Z rotation to 0 because I want my text to look like it's simply leaning back. I'm going to leave the perspective at zero and I'm going to change the extrude depth to about 100. Now if I turn on my preview checkbox you can see the changes that we made so far. I'm going to click the more options button to expand my lighting and I'm going to change the lighting so it's coming from the bottom right corner. And then I'm going to change the blend steps to 100. That way we'll have a nice smooth transition on our highlights on our 3D text. Next, I'm going to press Ctrl C to copy my 3D text and Ctrl F to paste it in place. And then I'm going to come up here and click Object, Expand Appearance. And then I can use my Direct Selection tool or just hold Ctrl. And I'm going to select all the faces of each letter. Now I'm holding Shift and Ctrl as I do this. That way I can select all of them at once. Now that I have them all selected, I'm going to press Ctrl C to copy all the faces of those letters. Then with my selection tool, I'm going to select the copy of the 3D text that I made and I'm going to delete it. So now we're left with the original that is not expanded. Next I'll press Ctrl F to paste those faces that I just copied back into the document. Then I'm going to come over to my Pathfinder tool and using this button here I'm going to merge them all into a single shape. Next, I'm going to come up and change the color to the faces of my text to white. And I'm also going to give it a white stroke and set that to 0.1 pixels. That way it covers any of the edges that might have shown through on our original 3D text. Next, I'm going to press Ctrl C to copy that white text again and Ctrl F to paste it in place. Then I'm going to remove that stroke and I'm going to go back into my gradient and click that to apply the gradient to my text and change the angle to negative 90 degrees again. This time I'm going to make it a dark gray to black. So for my first color I'm going to take it to about 75 or 80 percent. And for the second color I'm going to make it almost black. Now I can use my arrow keys to nudge it up and to the left just a couple of pixels. So if I deselect that you can see what we have so far. Now I'm going to select that top dark gray text. Press Ctrl C to copy. Ctrl F to paste and I'm going to nudge it back down to the original position, so down and to the right two pixels. Then I'm going to change the color of that to plain black, and I'm going to move it down to align with the bottom of my 3D text. Then I'm going to press Control left bracket to send it back in my document until it's just behind the 3D text. Now I'm going to click Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and set that to a radius of about 12 pixels and hit OK. 
Then I'm going to come into my transparency panel and change the opacity of that shadow to about 50%. Again, I'm going to press Ctrl C to copy that shadow and Ctrl F to paste it in front. And I'm going to come down to my appearance panel here and click on the Gaussian blur effect. And this time I'm going to set the radius to about 75 and hit OK. And then change the opacity for that blur to about 60%. So at this point we're pretty much done and all we have to do is add the texture. So I'm going to go ahead and open my texture here and drag it into my document. And I'm going to align it with the canvas using the alignment tools up top again. And then all I have to do is change the blend mode to color burn and set the opacity to about 75%. Now keep in mind that you aren't limited to just text for this effect. You can follow the same steps using any vector shapes to create some really cool 3D effects. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.